Oh, it's working. I think. Yeah. Well, it's Black Bright, and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. First time you're visiting my channel, then welcome, and you can click the subscribe, like, and share. And if my return subscribers, welcome again. So, yeah, we're talking about Love Island. This is the lighter side of Black Bright, and I tend to talk about Love Island, which is the only show um, that I really talk about. So I was just thinking about this evening and I was thinking, well, I didn't really, there was nothing in it that really grabbed me, but there were a few little things that I kind of honed in on. And I had to write them down because I thought to myself, well, if I don't, I'll only forget them. So the first thing that came to my mind was Natalia when she was talking to Luke M. And she's saying, oh, you're such a nice person, you're so nice. And Demi, she's so nice. I wish you... I mean, shut quit the bull crap. Honestly, if you haven't got anything sensible to say, don't say anything at all. No point telling him that he's so nice and you don't want him. You're just taking the pee. I wish they'd get her out. I don't like her at all. I think she's very, very fake. So that's my first observation. Second one. Jess's face... Yeah, Jess's face when she's taken off the makeup. How come all here is white and round the edges is all brown? What is all that about? Is that where she's left the foundation on? Or and why if they're putting foundation on, why does it have to be so brown? And who else looked a bloody mess with that? I mean Shauna. I mean I've seen her without makeup before, but she looked totally different without makeup this evening. I think it's because she didn't have her eyelashes on. And then, she looked fantastic when she was going to see, um, what's the new bloke's name, Jamie. Didn't she? She looked bloody gorgeous. I mean, it's like chalk and cheese. I guess it's makeup for you, isn't it? And that's why a lot of men feel deceived, because you go out to a club and you see these beautiful women not walking around beautiful long hair, lovely long eyelashes, <laughs> lumpy lips, looking all gorgeous. And then you take the, well, you probably don't, don't reach, they probably don't reveal it the same night, but a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road, <laughs> it's not her hair, it's not her eyelashes, she takes her makeup off. And she looks like some of those people in Love Island. I mean, it's okay if you wear makeup and it just complements what you look like anyway. But when it looks totally, totally different, I don't get it and they cake it on. Anyway, I'm not here to criticise them, really. I, it was just an observation I made. I just didn't understand with Jess how the middle of her face was white and all round the edge was all brown. I just didn't get it. So if somebody would tell me what that is, what's going on there, I'd really appreciate it. It's, has she left the foundation on around there? Uh, what else was there? Oh, did you see when um, Luke M made breakfast for Demi and Luke T and Shanice? And when um, Shauna looked over, the dirty look she gave him. I bet she's saying, look at those lovely couples and I'm here without anyone. It must be difficult, though, to be in on Love Island and you don't have a fella. It must be really, really difficult, especially when everybody around you is coupled up. Then we had, um, what else have I put here? Jamie, he's a bit of a salt, isn't he? 28, recruitment consultant, decent job, looks good got some banter it's got the tattoos I'm not really a tattoo person myself but you know for those girls he's got the tattoos he's got the height looks good I think Finn might have a bit of a hmm I was wondering if I was wondering if Paige would fancy him because he looks like a bit of a Finn but he's Scottish and much more mature 28 I wouldn't like anything to come between those two but hmm, you never know you never know. And he does he looks the same age as bloody Finn. I mean Finn doesn't look well, Finn doesn't really look twenty. And what else is there? He's looking for looks, commitment and personality. That's what he's looking for. 
So who fits the bill? I think he should go for Shauna, if anyone, since he chose her. But then, you know, I don't see the point. What I don't get is when they say, OK, they choose two girls that they're going to meet and want to have a date with. They, actually, they know the girls because they've been watching the programme and they have dates with the girls and you would think it would be just between those two girls but oh no once they by once they have those dates with those two girls oh well i've got to get to know everyone why do you have to get to know everyone and that's what Pete, you know you give credit to luke m demi talking about oh she told the girls that she's more attracted to luke m that's what she told them she said, he's a nice bloke, but I'm more attracted to Luke M. So I thought when she went and spoke to Luke M, I thought she was going to reassure him and say, oh, yeah, I went on the date with um, Jamie, but, you know, he's a nice fellow and everything, but I'm much more drawn to you. Why then? You know what it is. She's got abandonment issues. And because Naz chose somebody else over her, she's now becoming protective. And thinking to herself, well, you know, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket to, for Luke M because he might see somebody else and go off with them. And then I'm going to be committed to him and I'm going to have I have egg over my face or whatever. But she doesn't she hasn't looked at. Well, you can't really tell in the house. I mean, me personally, I know Luke M wouldn't do that. I know Luke M wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have swore categorically that Naz wouldn't do that. But there's something about Luke M that I think he's very loyal. And I don't think his head would be turned once he decides. I might be wrong. But now, Demi's put a spanner in the works. He's not going to want to put 100% in her now. So she sport it. Now, if... Um, Jamie now chooses someone else. Luke M isn't going to want her. He's not going to, because she shouldn't have said she's still going to get to know Jamie. She can talk to him, that's still getting to know him. But you put your focus on Luke M. You go drag yourself out of nowhere. He was minding his own business, happy as Larry, waiting for somebody new to come in the villa. You went and imposed yourself on him. And said, oh, you want to get to know him and you've liked him and you chose him first. And now you're talking about, oh, you're going to get to know Jamie. That's not right. You should have left him on his own. But she was thinking about her bloody self. She was probably thinking, oh, everybody's in a couple. I want to cuddle. I want to kiss. Right, let me go and use Luke M then. Because that's what she did. She used him. And I don't like that because I like Luke M. And I think that's not a very nice thing to do. Demi needs, Demi needs to get on her bloody bike. Because even when Naz was in the other house, she's making out, oh, I want Naz, I want Naz. But she was flirting with that bloke. It's only until she realised, oh, he probably wasn't, maybe he didn't have what Naz had. That, she, you know, that she threw him to the curb. But it's not like she was sitting there waiting for Naz all that time. So... No, Demi's gone down in my estimation because she's out. She's just using Luke M to stay in the villa and to make it look like they're a couple. But they forget that we're watching. And a lot of times we get to choose the most authentic couples. Now, Demi and Luke M are no longer an authentic couple. She's betrayed him. That's all I've worked out. That's just my opinion. What else did I want to say? Um, until they meet that one. Yeah, I was just thinking though, you know, like Paige and Finn and Shauna and Luke T. You know, once you meet someone and you actually connect with them, regardless who comes into the villa, your head shouldn't turn. So unless you're being fake with the people that you're pairing up with, I don't get it. 
and I don't get Demi, I don't get Demi's conversation at all. That's all I wanted to say. That's what I put down here. I like getting to know Luke M, but of course I'm up to getting to know someone else. Then she goes over and says, oh, I think I might have done something silly. I told him that I wasn't interested in, I was interested in getting to know Jamie and then I kissed him. Is that bad? That's because she's she's moving on her, on her hormones. And that's because she's probably naturally drawn to Luke T because he's very attractive. But she's afraid she's going to lose her chance with Jamie. And Jamie's quite nice. But the thing is, is that these men are watching that program. And when they see you switching like that, and then she goes, oh, I kissed Luke M last night, which means you're starting getting intimate with him. So why are you now looking, looking for someone else? Oh, dear. Oh, Luke T made me laugh when he said, <laughs> when Luke M was worried about um, Demi going for the date. And he said, you should have asked if she needed any help and then given her a black bin bag. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Hide all her assets. Uh, let me see. Jamie left Shauna speechless. Yeah, um, but she's got competition. Um, I think they got on quite well. Um, I'm not sure. I think he might like her. I don't know who Jamie would like. I mean, he's got he's got he's, he's got a sense of humour. So, but I'm not quite sure who his personality would gel with. So that's going to be an interesting one. Hmm, as long as he doesn't touch Shanice and he doesn't touch um, Paige. What a turn for the books if he goes for Molly. Ooh. I think Molly's a bit young for him though. I think she's a bit immature. Anyway, let me see what else I've got here. Oh, and Jamie's, he says, I've only been single for eight months. Only? That's a good sign because it shows that, you know, um, it could be much longer and he's not, he doesn't seem to be too worried about it. And for him, it's not, a, it's not an issue to be single for eight months. So that's good. It probably means that he's quite a stable guy. Well, he did say he's looking for commitment. So if he means it, that's good. Um, and why are these men wearing face masks? I don't get it. And Sean, Sean in those bloody jeans, those ripped up jeans and that little uh, army jacket. She's a sexy little thing, isn't she? Luke T is really, the, the two of them, the two of them are like two little sexy numbers. I think those two are really a good couple. I have to say that every night because every time I see them, I just think, oh, and they're just so natural. And when they're in bed, they're stroking each other's face and they're looking at each other's eyes and they don't have to say anything. I mean, you just feel it. You feel it through the bloody TV screen. You feel the passion. You feel the chemistry. And yet they're so cool. Mm. What else? What about Mike on that bloody pump? <laughs> the man have stamina, me, I tell you. Bloody hell. I mean, was he trying to prove a point or what? <laughs> oh, what did the, what's his name say, Demi? Uh, the foot pump could get pregnant. <laughs> I'll tell you why Mike fit in her ass. <laughs> oh dear. And then I'm sure about which focus group did they use when they were talking about a woman has an orgasm for 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Yeah. Well, I've been asked to not bought that. But let me see what else is there. She said the girls that she's more attracted to Luke M. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so... All I've got to say today is if you're happy with who you have, why explore and look for someone else? The only time you should be looking for somebody else is if who you have is not what you want or he's not giving you what you want or what you need, I should say. 
you know, if he's not if fulfilling you emotionally, might not be fulfilling you emotionally, might not be communicating with you properly, and then you would know. But I don't. I think that you know, with what's her name? I think she did a good thing, even though I kind of slagged off a little bit. Um, Natalia, she said she didn't have it. She didn't feel it with Luke M. So she knew from the beginning, and you do know. So she wasn't leading him on. But I think a lot of those girls, well, it's like the men, they're trying to make it work. They know there's something wrong and they're not being honest with themselves. I think you really need to be honest with yourself. If something isn't working, don't make excuses. If somebody's not treating you right, don't make excuses. And I think what happens in the villa is that it's accentuated when things aren't quite right, like with Callum, I mean, he was putting up with it, but he felt a bit overwhelmed by Shauna. And he should have said there and then, look, you know, I find you a bit overwhelming. I don't think this is going to work. But then again, if you gave up at every hurdle, there wouldn't be any relationship. So how do you draw that line? How do you make the distinction between somebody who you kind of, don't quite get on with but maybe over time you can overlook it and get on with them as opposed to somebody who's got traits that you can't stand at all and I think that's what it is I think there's certain traits that people have that you cannot tolerate at all and those are the ones you should say to them look you know it's not going to work and then if they have got traits that you can tolerate, then maybe you can think to yourself, OK, I'm going to tolerate them. The only problem with that is in the villa, as opposed to in the outside world, is that if somebody comes into the villa and the traits that you're tolerating, that other person doesn't have them, it's going to make you gravitate to the, the other person. And I think that's what happens all the time. And that's why these people are always exploring, looking for somebody who who has traits that are less, that are more tolerable than the person that you're with. And that's all I've got to say for tonight, folks. Until tomorrow, Love Island, good night. <laughs>